So to start with our discussion for our one hour meeting today, I'd like to have a simple recap of a list of lessons that we have the previous uh, the previous chapters to have with you. Okay, keep on reading, and uh, would like to have it since this is auditing. Am I right? This is advanced auditing. It is always a key part of a good corporate governance and the directors, the management, a certain company needs to have it for maintaining a system of control that will safeguard the company's assert. Thus, it gives guidelines of the facts that auditors must be aware of as part of, this, of their planning for carrying out a true and fair report. So you will notice from that uh, very simple uh, what, insight regarding our subject, it is already indicative that your subject, that your course is really a significant one. Isn't it? Coming from the previous terms that we have, we have the so-called control matters noted during COVID deficiency. Marami tayong na-input doon. Have you read plenty of things regarding this audit deficiency? By the way, uh, if you are talking of this auditing subject, it is of course an independent examination by a certain assigned auditor, an accountant who will be assigned as an auditor. For example, if it is an internal auditor, it can also be possibly external auditor joining some auditing firms. Right? So plenty of terms are to be related to our topics. And uh, before this uh, auditing class notes, okay, so we will have some other review, recap of those terms under the control deficiency. So when you say deficiency, this is more or less related to these auditing tasks of our auditors. It is a control deficiency that creates more than a, say a remote like include that a non-consequential financial statements is having some misstatement can not be cannot be prevented cannot be detected okay that is under your significant deficiencies we have also uh, some inputs regarding the management it is the management responsibility to evaluate and address control deficiencies, the terms that we have on your previous slides. The reports must be in writing and shall be addressed to the management. If ever there are some reports not coming from the auditor, it should be addressed to the management. Okay? And it should be in writing. Meaning, it is a true document, it is binding because it is black and white, sabi. Okay? And the management need to ha have a hands-on on these reports. And some other people who are charged, are in charge of this corporation governance, or governance of any business establishment to are dealing with we are we will be dealing with in the near future in the case of our students okay and then it said that the management was to perform and an audit the management was to perform an audit not to perform this without an opinion on internal control okay the report should indicate that the governments the governance or the management was to perform an audit, not to perform an opinion on internal control. There are instances wherein the reports must be indicative that an internal control opinion is not necessary. Okay? The report shall be issued no later than 60 days after the report release. 
and an accountant must be engaged to examine the date and report on management on management's written assertion about the operating effective of effectiveness operating effectiveness of internal control over this write up or this report okay. Okay, there are a lot of other terms to consider proceeding to our next lesson today. We have the so-called audit committee, which is a group of these people who will be in charge to the examinations of all the financial reports referred by a certain company. In a certain company, definitely by an accountant assigned, okay? Uh -huh. It is a subset sometimes when you say audit committee, a subset of the board outside directors and its main functions responsibly is within the corporation. We have also the so-called independent auditor who is required to obtain a management representation letter. Yes, this representation letter which I am always discussing during our auditing subjects is very important because it will be uh, having the very contents of what is the scope of examinations or audit that will be done. And that is primarily to what? To avoid misunderstandings or conflict between the client and then the auditor. So they need to, of course, abide by this management letter. Okay, this independent Letter also is very important in handling any auditing tasks. Okay, and the that is of course your management representation letter as the final piece of evidential matter. Number one, to confirm representations given by the auditor. To document the, continu the continuing appropriateness of such representations. So when you say appropriateness, this will be relating to how accurate the figures they're in, in your audited report. And to reduce, of course, primarily to reduce the possibility of having some misunderstanding between the client and the auditor, which is always to be done because it is a need that there must be a good, uh, say, ambience within the company in terms of the auditing external auditors work and with the management of a certain company okay so having now our auditing for class notes we have here auditing three or rather four the main concepts of auditing four are the procedures used to test financial balances and transaction example substantive testing, audit documentation, and audit evidences. So these are common terms, isn't it? What are these audit evidences? What are these audit documentations? Which will be part of how they will maintain these things in the proper sequences, so that they can be presented and see to it that all these accounting procedures are being followed in the conduct of examining the financial statement balances. Siempre, when you say statement account balances or financial statement balances and transactions, everybody can relate. What are these transactions being done during the course of a business enterprise? Uh, operations of any business entity, of any business enterprise, isn't it? So this is the very coverage of your accounting subjects. Uh, very basic. Ano ba ang composition ng ating financial statement balances? Precisely, everyone can relate that when we talk of FS, yan, pasok na pasok na dyan ang ating mga basic FS, basic financial reports such as your the statement of owner's equity, balance sheet, 
your income statement, cash flow statements are to simplify, it tells those are the statements, financial statements or financial statements depicting rather depicting the uh, condition, the financial condition as well as the financial position of a certain company. Okay? So, it goes with we, if you have the accounting cycle during our uh, basic accounting subjects, here comes the man, our transaction cycles because we are now having an audit task. Okay? So for number one, transaction cycles now include cycles for revenues, expenditures, oops, payroll. Okay. Personal inventory and production, property, plant, and equipment, investments, and other liabilities. From the very first one, you are uh, quite aware of this revenue, isn't it? So these revenues, expenditures can be located in your IS, our statement of what comprehensive income. Nandiyan yung ating sources, saan ang galing lahat yung inyong mga income, sources of revenue, as well as the expenditure. I'm referring to, is it what? Operating expenses ba yan? Is it selling expenses? Mm -hmm. Is it administrative expenses? Miscellaneous expenses? Everything must be part of these expenditures that they are presenting now. The payroll... Precisely everyone has the very term payroll, personal inventory. Of course, when you say payroll, this will be regarding the same salaries given to our employees. For example, with the different deductions, ano yung gross income, what are the deductible items under the Philippine law, it should be part of Siyempre, nandiyan yung deductions natin from, uh, say, pag-ibig, from SSS, pag nasa government kayo, GSIS. So, this will be all about the payroll. Personal inventory, probably certain company. Production, precisely you have it. Siyempre, when you are dealing with a manufacturing firm, we are to account for the production. There is a certain thing as production area or production department. Property, plant, and equipment. Yes, because you have your PPE in your accounting, isn't it? When you say PPE, that connotes plant. Signifying that you are dealing with a manufacturing firm. Is last for fixed assets or what? Ano pa yung natin? LLA, long live assets. Okay, investments, part of it. So when we are talking of investments, andyan na, papasok na yung mga ano natin, stocks, bonds, you know, in our naman ALC that can be represented by your capital options. Okay, and other liabilities. So again, liability is a very common term because this is referring, these are referring to all the company's obligations, their payables, regardless of whatever time, whether they are long-term or short-term, current or non-current liabilities. Yan. Kasama yan lahat sa isang transaction, sa cycle na isang transaction, which are subjected for auditing. Each of these cycles, the auditor wants to answer two crucial questions. Number one, are controls operating effectively? So, dyan papasok yung, is this internal control uh, can be considered effectively being performed? Okay, because that can be shown by those financial reports being actions, balances, and disclosures been recorded properly 
properly in accordance with GAAP. Okay? Nandiyan daw ba ang lahat ng transactions? Of course, you have the daily transactions wherein you have the two values for the quit and values received. What are the balances? Disclosures. Of course, may mga uh, say notes which are to be considered as Recorded daw ba siya in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles? So you have them in some other subjects that you have. When you say accounting principles, may tinatawag tayong uh, principles of, meron tayong, is there such thing as relevancy? Relevant ba? With materiality ba yan? With comparability? Reliability? Things like that. Understandability? So pasok dyan ang mga tinatawag. which must be observed in the preparations of your accounting papers or accounting reports. Okay? In the textbook, you will see each transaction cycle presented in three ways. Okay? Tatlo. Ang pamamaraan kung paano natin inaano ang bawat transaksyon. One, in written sentence is a flowchart. And in a chart, mm -hmm. pay attention to the division of responsibilities as shown in the flowcharts and how the auditor might test the controls shown in the charts. So when you say chart, that will be provided and is being, uh, say, used in an accounting firm of a certain company. Meron sila yan. And then the auditor will check on it. If they are really appropriate ways in terms of how to handle these transactions. Okay? It is the company's responsibility to properly segregate duties and implement effective control. Mm -hmm. So again, expected that the, it is management responsibility or any officers. Those officers who are in charge of the good governance of a certain company. To see to it that these controls are being followed and within the accounting process. Okay? It is the company's responsibility, uh -huh. the auditor's responsibility is to evaluate those controls decides whether or not to rely on them and to determine the nature, extent, and timing of substantive audit procedures. So here comes now an auditor. The auditor must see to it that all of those procedures expected must be properly followed. Okay? For each transaction cycle, be aware of whether the account being examined is an asset, is an asset, whether is it an asset, is it a revenue, or a liability expense. Okay, so regarding our account in terms of whether it is an asset, is it an income, liability, or expense? Again. They are all examined with care by an auditor, meaning equally these uh, four account names being given, counting elements presented, which are precisely very, very important, isn't it? When we are talking of those basic FS, and this for your balance sheet, you have your income and uh, expenses for your IS. So, lahat na yan to be accounted for equally, in equal footing, okay? This usually dictates whether the assertion of ex existence or the assertion of completeness is being tested. Again, nandiyan yung rigid um, investigation of a certain auditor on how are this accounting elements being recorded 
Okay? So, for letter A, sub-explanation for assets, revenues, the focus is open on whether the account actually exists, making sure the accounts are not overstated. Yes? Because we have to consider assets and revenues are very, very in the presentation of our financial statements. So it must be properly accounted for. No overstate and uh, no overstate. Okay, the, the auditor can easily check. But may overstated, it must be with ano kagawin yung kagad ng report ng ating auditor for proper appropriation. Parlayan fully recorded. Picture again that the accounts are understated. Mm -hmm. If there are something which are to be considered some figures are overstated, that can possibly also understated in terms of, mas madalas daw ang understatement in terms of our liabilities and expenses. Okay. Now, overstate naman madalas sa ating revenues and assets. See? So these are the Auditor. If a flow chart is presented on the examination, it will typically present various departments. Okay? Showing segregation of duties. Walang magkakaroon ng same na nagkakaroon ng overflow of duties or nagkakaroon ng redundancy. As sometimes, ano tawag doon, nagkakaroon sila ng, yes, it should be properly segregated as well as show how a particular transaction starts with a source document. Example, sales order. So an auditor must be looking for your document, underlying document, the PO. Ano pinagmulan yan? If you have the sales order, uh -huh, we have also the other side of your purchase order. So, sales order are papers. To support the sales that are being generated because yung mga ESCO nanggagaling yan sa mga what? From our customers of a certain company. They are the very one who will be ordering volume of quantities for our companies to sell it out. Kaya yan. Yan ay isang source document na binibigyan ng and to be presented. Sales order. Okay? So if you have the sales order, you have also the corresponding PO purchase order. Okay, and is process to ultimate inclusion in the financial statements. See? Because again, all figures, all uh, reports must be with underlying documents. It must be supported with this to prove that there is such thing as accuracy, authenticity, Concreteness in the figures stated in our financial reports, okay? Number seven, in evaluating each transaction cycle, the auditor should determine whether management has implemented sound internal control. Example, the auditor should see evidence of paid PI tips. to say, for example, if you are dealing with companies that are having some services in terms of possible na possible yan, so mga hotel, restaurants, or say, uh, tour offices. So, again, it will be an evaluation of this transaction. Again, meron dong sound internal control na binabanggit as if procedures done 
When you say internal control, this is within the company. Huh? Is the internal control that effective? Can it be reliable? Again, the auditor can pinpoint some can or detect errors if there are some mispractices, malpractices in terms of those internal control procedures. Okay, so napakalaga ng magandang internal control in a certain sound. And uh, siyempre, pwede natin i-relate dyan 10 of times that the saying uh, in the first place, even if you are an internal auditor or external auditor, you need to be what? A person with good credibility, trusted, because your company is having a complete trust to the auditor as well as other users of our as an individual he must be an honest with integrity yeah an individual perception because an auditor is parang tatak niya niya yun kailangan meron siyang sense of uh, credibility, responsibility, and goes with, kind of, with honesty because all these figures must be with truthfulness in terms of accurate. So, dito pa lang, mga dear students, ma, i-relate nyo na ang kahalagahan ng inyong course. So, see to it that you are there to pursue with your process. Because you can sense already the very need, the necessity of being in this field of accounting. Diba? Pag naging auditor ka pa, why? Because you are trained that way. Simple uh, accounting guides to be very honest. Walang nagpo-force balance, things like that. Because it can be imbibed throughout the years. And take note in our study of this auditing, laging ina-emphasize ang auditor's well, sense of responsibility for the audited reports that will be prepared by an auditor. Okay, in terms naman of revenue cycle. So first, you are aware. It will be depending upon is it a merchandising firm? Is it a service activity? Or is it a manufacturing firm? So regardless of whatever kind or whatever source of revenue income generated, so this revenue cycle must be applicable. Okay, when you say revenue cycle, oh, so this is more or less just looking at it, parang more on merchandising yan, di ba? by the author sales, accounts receivable, and cash receipts. So probably all our accounting students can relate no? that this revenue cycles, cycle rather comprise of the very major source of income in a merchandising firm is blank. Definitely that is sales, isn't it? Sales, the bigger the volume of sales, the bigger the profit. Accounts receivable, of course, we have the so-called what? Uh, those are accounts receivable, the right of a certain person to collect. He has the right to collect because, so this is more of, yes, accounts receivable. So again, you need to have an account for accounts receivable because you have the right to collect. This is more and more related to when you are making some sales on account. Sales on credit, is that it? Because you sell it out without receiving any cash and that will fall under your accounts receivable. You have the right to collect for whatever volume of uh, on credit, on account. So, dun po magpasok ang ating term na account name, accounts receivable. Ano ba? The right to collect. Okay? 
So doon meron din tayong tinatawag na notes receivable pero kasama yan. I'm meaning, ikinoption siya as accounts receivable but it will be inclusive of some other receivables here. Cash receipts. Of course, you have your cash receipts coming from, say, payments of those phones. Uh -huh. Selling it out on COD. So you'll be having your cash receipts. So all cash receipts that only coming from the in and outs, for example, that will be in and outs of your cash. Okay. If you are, you are having some cash disbursements, it should also be, be cash receipts. I rather, yes, meron tayong mga OR doon. But when you say cash so that is more of coming from the collections of your collect receivables or collectibles. Okay. So emphasis is on the existence assertion as there is often a motivation to overstate revenue and receivables. Okay? So if there is such thing as overstated of revenue and receivables, again, it will be detected by an auditor. So we need to be very careful if it is uh, sometimes um, uh, not not intention nagkaroon ng overstatement of this revenue and receivables need to be very careful because that is part of the internal control pag maganda ang internal control you can avoid such thing because you can only record this uh, accurate figures based on your given document These revenues and receivables need not be tolerable. Why? Again, it will be detected under our auditing process. Another important assertion is valuation. Obtaining credit approval, preparing an aging schedule, and the allowances for doubtful accounts relate to this assertion. So, napakahalaga no. Especially when you are getting a credit approval. You will have, you can only have credit approval if there is such thing as nagconduct ba ng credit investigations of these papers and these things. That's why they were allowed to be given such amount for their deliveries. Okay, Aging schedule that will be scheduled on uh, the payables as well as the receivables. Ginagawan din yan ang mga age ng ating accounts receivable as well as the payable. Uh, yes, payable. Because aging teacher will collect or will provide some sort of credibility on the part of the company. Kasi they will see to it that they are paying obligations at time because they can easily look at the aging schedule. And this will be, again, a very important paper, counting paper to consider. Yes, the allowances of doubtful accounts also is very important. So when you say doubtful accounts, I tell you plenty a lot of times, plenty, plenty of times been um, explained that this is synonymously been used for what? And doubtful accounts is also bad debts and collectible accounts. See? So, yan, mga nakapalood yan lahat sa ating papers na kailangan bigyan ng ingat sa paggagawa because those are all part of this auditing subject for investigation, for study, before they can come up with an audited financial reports. Okay? So, we have also expenditure cycle mm -hmm. if we have the revenue cycle here comes our expenditure cycle it will be inclusive Siyempre, purchases is always part of our expenditure cycle because in our preparation of income state if you will notice there are students senate 
when it is purchases that will be part of your cost of goods sold okay or sometimes the caption title is cost and expenses and that is to be considered with inventory beginning plus purchases for the period then you will be getting your available cost inventory at the end to get your cost of sales so purchases is definitely part and parcel of your expenditure cycle okay and then yes accounts payable Sempre. accounts payable is always related to and part of the expenditure cycle because these are disbursements obligations of a certain company disbursing this amount for what reason what are the documents to prove that your cash disbursements normally will have it in your cash flow statements the in and outs a eh, tama ba yung mga figures accounted for in your statement so again the auditor will look into it that the auditing procedures for audit control the internal audit the specific assertion typically address in the expenditure cycle is completeness as expenses and payables may be understated okay so again it was uh, emphasized the need for the completeness which i have mentioned one of the accounting principles being given it should abide with your generally accepted accounting principles the completeness the comparability the reliability and completeness as expense and payables may be understated again if you have these payables as understated there need there is a need for appropriation and adjustments know the duties performed in this department say for example purchasing department receiving department accounts payable and the treasurer for proper segregation of duties walang nagiging nag uh, duties and responsibilities it must be well well specified that this is part of your purchasing department these are uh tant amount to say these are the responsibilities of the receiving and accounts payable department the treasurer must be uh, responsible liable for whatever amounts been given as part of your FK. Diyan nakikita yung uh, kanya kanyang scope of duties and responsibilities. Why? Because that will be, again, to pinpoint or trace the responsibility or the people concerned who are in charge of these different departments. Know how an auditor would typically search for unrecorded liabilities. Uh -huh. Liabilities or whatever being missed in your FS again under the expenditure cycle, it will be taken into account by our auditor. Under cash. Be familiar with the controls surrounding cash, receipts, lockbox, restrictive endorsements. Now, all of these things will be, again, uh, studied and well, well. And we conduct this auditing procedure. Proper segregation of duties also important. Pay attention to the roles played by each department involved in the collection of cash receipts yes and this is plainly to pinpoint who is in charge if ever there is such thing as discrepancies there are anomalies being detected errors then again can easily be pinpointed because there is such thing as segregation okay so hindi pwedeng magturuan kasi kitang kita kaagad ano ba ang 
uh, job specification of this department and they will be in charge of it. They are responsible for whatever. They are liable for whatever error has been committed. Okay, the primary assertion tested is existence. Cash confirmations, bank statements, bank reconciliation, and transfer schedules all relate to this assertion. Uh -huh. So, aware kay dito? Bank statements are given by the bank every end of the month, and that will be very, very important in the preparation of the bank reconciliations. When you say bank reconciliations as part also of your subject, ito yung kinu-compare ang deposit of the company, company deposit per book of the company, uh, reconciling it with the books of the banks. Uh, tinitingnan din niya ng auditor whether there is such uh, cash confirmations in terms of those uh, reconciling items being given under your bank reconciliations. Lahat na yan binibigyan ng emphasis under cash count. Under the audit documentation, the auditor must create audit documentation also called working papers. Okay? Audit documentation serves as the primary record of the work performed and provides support for the opinion rendered to the on. Again, uh, this auditing or rather working papers are, not, are very, very important because audit documentation is part of it. Okay, audit documentation belongs to the auditor. Be aware of the confidentiality issues surrounding audit documentation because the auditor is the one who has hands-on knowledge of all this. And it is there. It should be taken with confidentiality. It is their prerogative to take charge and to keep it secret from any other parties interested in it, not unless they are with authorization to do it. Be aware of the specific requirements surrounding audit documentation. Example, it should meet the experience auditor. It should meet the experience of the records to the financial statements, demonstrate compliance with field work standards, identify who performed and who reviewed the work. So this part, it needs to be obliged. So we are all obliged if we are in a certain company to focus on these specific requirements that will be very important in the preparation of an audit documentation. Okay? Be aware of the factors that are documentation. Okay? Must be very careful these things because that will be affecting the quantity, content of your documentation, audit documentation, which is very, very vital in the process of these tasks. Understand what matters should be considered significant audit findings and how such matters should be documented. Example, okay, so these are all part of our auditing findings. It can be after the 60 days of no, they will have a written report regarding your significant audit findings. Know what sorts of things are typically included in audit documentation and know the difference between the permanent file and the current file. See? So if you are in those things in terms of the permanent file as well as our current file, which are part audit documentation. Part and partial, very significant in an audit documentation. Number seven, understand what tick marks are and how they are used. Can you relate to the tick marks? In our very uh, simple posting to the ledger, meron na tayo di presented. 
say when you are for example having a journal entry that be posted to the general ledger meron na tayong tinatawag na simple tick marks but tick marks here are also related to this audit documentation the simple tick mark is a it when you are uh, say for example as a uh, here comes is october 9 transaction ka na and somebody called you it is general ledger but this tick mark is of course regarding also the audit documentation okay now the terms report release date the date on which the auditor grants permission to use the report okay so we cannot force any auditor to give it once it must be in accordance to ano ba yung date na i-release niya na yung kanyang report documentation must be assembled so it is a must that this documentation will be properly accounted for tinatawag na bibigyan ka ng uh, date i'll be giving you for example the auditor the uh, external auditor now is talking to the internal auditor or the management i'll be giving you say 15 days to submit everything for our documentation completion day non-issuers documentation completion date report release plus 60 days yeah, normally 60 days issuers documentation completion date report release date plus 45 days okay retention requirements five years for a Audits of non-issuers, seven years for audits of issuers. Okay, so these are all about this task of auditing under the audit documentations. So these are all important to consider when there is an ongoing audit. And these audit documentations are part and parcel of any auditing tasks that will be performed by an auditor external auditor or internal auditor okay so here comes our audit evidence okay the third standard of field work relates to audit evidence stating the sufficient appropriate audit evidence must be obtained Okay, when we are talking of audit evidence, proof of this to prove that there is such thing as incompleteness, concreteness, accuracy in terms of those figures presented. Audit evidence consists of underlying accounting data and corroborating evidence. Know what is included in each of these terms. Okay, so when you say underlying accounting data and corroborating evidence, yeah, your sense of principle of comparability and, uh, and documents in terms of what are these accounting data. So it must be, again, we are obliged to have those under our audit evidence. Sufficiency refers to the quantity of audit evidence. Sufficient na na present ang mga papers to prove the accuracy, the authenticity of the figures, and judgment. This statement and the quality of the evidence. Send it that I have discussed on the start of our discussion. I have explained rather in the start of our discussion those simple audit act wherein meron tayong nababanggit na different kinds of these audit risks. Okay, evidence is okay, so yun yung tinatawag natin mga principles of 
is it really relevant, significant to have this evidences? Makakarelay ba ang isang auditor in your presented document as proof and evidence of the figures stated therein? Know what each of these terms mean and know that the reliability of evidence is improved. The auditor generated under strong controls evidence by documentation and consistent with information from other sources. See, the auditor says, way on how to prove that there is such thing as consistency with this information gathered when it is related to other sources. Okay? If evidence exists in electronic form, the auditor must consider when and for how long it will be available. Okay? There is a length of time given by our auditor for it to be an audit evidence which is acceptable. Whether it is in an electric form, okay, then meron yang given specified time. Parang kayo din, in our answering of the queries, need to have answer all the questions given or else yeah, nawawala or you will be late in answering all the queries. So just be very careful and observe this time. Okay? Audit evidence is obtained through performances of audit procedures. Okay? Uh, say for example, in a certain company, and dito na external auditor, so say, or is it one month depending upon the letter of engagement that is being, yes, uh, being signed by the uh, company owner, by the management and the external auditor themselves. Okay. The mnemonic five carrots may be used as a memory aid for various audit procedures, okay? Substantive testing. Substantive testing consists of tests of details and analytics. Substantive, right? Because everything is taken up in detail with proper supporting documents. Test of details, tests, uh, tests, details consists of audit procedures applied to so ending balances, the details of transaction or a combination of the two, whether it is about the ending balances or about the transactions incurred, rather generated transactions that took place will be with sort of uh, tests, study, comprehensive analysis to be done by our auditors as part of their substantive testing procedure. The okay, analytical procedure involves studying relationships among data and usually involve comparison of recorded amounts to auditor expectation. Mm -hmm. So, in terms of our recordings, for example, in your uh, books of original entries, so ano yung mga recorded amounts, and then it will be under this substantive taste testing of our auditor charge. It can be possibly coming from an external auditor assigned to have a test on all of these papers. And also, ang nagaganap, is it uh, following this analytical procedure because it will be done by our auditor in charge. Know that analytical procedures are required during planning as an overall review, but are optional with respect to substantive testing. Okay, so it will be depending upon the situation. In case of substantive testing, be aware of the fact Analytical procedures used as substantive 
procedure. Example, analytical procedure are more appropriate when there are predictable relationships involved. Okay, so when you say predictable relationships, so these are more of, there are some assumptions of, say, mis statements, understatements, as well as overstatement of figures. See, be when analytical procedures are used as substantive tests. Mm -hmm. So again, um, the management or the say the governance of a certain company must see to it that all the documents needed, the requirements of our auditor must be submitted, must be presented for study under the directional testing refers to the direction of an audit test. Okay. So directional testing again it should be subjected to your audit test. Okay, so if the auditor starts from the accounting records, uh -huh, it so find it not in the documents and traces forward to the accounting records. Mm -hmm. This test, the assertion of completeness, okay, from the very term of the principle of completeness, accounting principle of completeness. Okay, and then the procedure is from the original source documents. So you can relate, ano ba yung mga original source documents na yan na itinetrace papunta doon sa accounting records. When you say original source documents, there's at the very source. Say for example, when you have to go on with the accounting process, ano ba yung mga original source documents that will be used? For you to record transactions properly, legibly, and of course with these supporting documents. So, syempre, mag start ka. Ano ba yung mga, and that I said from the very beginning, counting cycles started with your source documents. We call it, syempre, and yung mga accounting papers, working papers. Patient receipts, sales invoices, purchase invoice, such as credit memos, debit memos, in the course of the business operations, kailangan niya. The auditor are always looking at it as source documents. Okay, ang tawag doon ay completeness and this is under and errors. Pagdating naman sa overstatement errors, ayan na. The auditor starts from the accounting record. Tinignan muna yung mga FS nyo bago siya pumunta and vouches backwards to the original sources of documents. So, this helps the auditor identify overstatement errors. So, these are techniques or ways on how to detect understatement errors as well as overstatement errors. The Understatement errors detection. I mas madali niya ma-identify ang ating understatement errors when he is start start to do it the source document then go to the accounting records and the other way around start with the accounting records and then bounces backwards and then look for the original source documents. So in either one, dapat nakahanda ating accounting people to present it for those tests, okay? And it was explained by our author, the so-called, yes, how it will be checked, how it will be examined by an auditor. How to detect understatement as well as overstatement. So, easily, can you to the um, different papers to support 
the figures. This is under our overstatement errors identification. Mas madaling makita ang overstatement errors. And understatements, the other way around. You need to start from the very original sources, the documents, underlying proof, evidences of those figures, and then go ahead with the accounting records. And power done ng ating COVID test. Okay, how about the inventory? Under inventory, number one, safeguarding uh, the very term inventory, isn't it? Everybody can relate. This can be possible, di ba? Dalawang account names natin yan. If you are having your paper, or rather, preparation of your FS, maraming tayong tinatawag na, what? Inventory beginning. We have also the so-called inventory at the end. Inventory, meron tayo yan. And there are different methods posting the inventory. We have the so-called FIFO, LIFO, uh, moving average, things like that, all to be related to this inventory. Okay, as part of the auditing task, this is it. Safeguarding of assets and segregation of duties are of primary importance for inventory. Ito again, um, that is to avoid yung uh, nagkakaroon ng sisability. Mas easily, can easily be traced can easily be detected if there are errors being committed. Right? Kaya part ng ating auditing procedure, ayan na. No, it's duties. Which duties should be properly segregated? Walang overlapping. Kasi nakikita ka agad who is responsible for these things under the audit procedure of most specifically in an inventory department. part of our auditing study. Yeah. Inventory observation is generally required. Our, accept our acceptable alternative procedures must be applied. Test counts should be utilized. So, that's why in a certain business establishment, the inventory, inventory department ay napakahalaga din yan because they know the very bin or even the inventor of supplies, uh, they, they have the first-hand knowledge of what are these available counts of stocks at present. So they, they must have the feel of, is it necessary for um, a replacement of additional stocks, whatever? Is there an, uh, a need for more and more production to replace these stacks of wood? Under our auditing task, yan. Meron tayong mga different alternative procedures wherein the test counts will be used in our inventory. Mm -hmm. Department, for example, cut off testing of purchases and sales should be performed. Okay, kasi relevant ito sa pag ano accounts receivable and accounts payable. Aging of receivables will also be under this one. Di ba? Sa ating mga banko, meron din tayong tinatawag na cut off. Pag nag-deposit ka ng cheque at uh, 12, for example, 1 o'clock, it will be because the cut-off period is 